If you count all the expansions in Hearthstone, you get 17. Plus the basic and classic set, you're up to 19. Every single set has good cards, every single set has bad cards. So I thought, let's just go through every single set and take a look at the best and the worst cards. Now for this list, there is one rule overall. And that rule is, we exclude minions that have literally no effect. I mean cards like Amgang Rager. The, the card is nothing. So we are going to exclude those on the list. We're starting with the basic set and go until Descent of Dragons. So let's see which cards are the best and the worst. I tried to keep every single set down to one best and one worst card, but as you will soon notice, I have to use more than one card each. That being said, my name is Solemn. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Solemn as we stream there multiple times a week. Or you could join our Discord, link for that in the description down below. That being said, let's start with basic. Well, I first thought that Wild Growth has to be the best basic card ever made because it not just gives you a mana crystal, it also used to be two mana and saw play in pretty much every single druid deck ever. At some point it got nerfed and then there were other cards to give you mana crystals, so it didn't become that important anymore for druid decks. Which is why I chose for the best card in the basic set, Sap. Return an enemy minion to your opponent's hand. It's very simple, but it's so insanely good. Even now, six years later, the card still sees play in many rogue decks. You don't silence and leave the minion on the field. You don't destroy and activate the death rattle. You don't shuffle it and give it back to your opponent. You just get rid of it for two mana. For me, Sap is number one. Which card is the worst? After tons of nerfs, Starving Buzzard. Usually when Blizzard nerfs a card, at least how it used to be, they make the card unplayable. Guess which card is unplayable? Starving Buzzard. For me, the card is so bad and so unplayable, it had to be the worst card in the basic set. Let's go to the classic set. Well, there are obviously tons of giant dragons and other legendaries like Savannah's and Ragnaros before they became part of the Hall of Fame. I go with Doomsayer on this one. The reason why I choose Doomsayer is it enables every single slow slash control deck. Having 7 health for 2 mana, it's just so good in the early game that it gives you the tempo back that you lose because the opponent plays faster cards. For the worst card though, I choose the guy that I opened in Golden, which made me really happy, Nat Pagel. I've not seen a single scenario in which you would ever like to play him or a single common in which he is useful. Also, he's legendary. Definitely the worst card for me. Now in Nax Ramos though, almost every single class has a card that is really good. When looking through all the cards, I thought, it might be Lothar. He still sees play, and he's a really unique and good effect. But I have to go with Voidcaller here. Not just because I'm insanely biased, because Warlock is my favorite class, but because Voidcaller into Voidlord, Voidcaller into Melganus, Voidcaller into any demon that has more than 5 mana is so insanely good. The usual combo is you play Sense Demons on turn 3, and join to Voidcaller and Voidlord. Voidcaller on turn 4, yeah, well the aggressive play either removes him or silences him, or you, you win the game. Void guy is number 1 for me. But the worst card in this set is Stone Skin Gargoyle. I haven't heard that name in a decade, right? At the start of your turn, restore this minion to full health. And it costs 3 mana. It's like Silverback Patriarch, but it doesn't have Taunt. I am pretty sure that I'm right when I say this, but I don't think I've ever seen the card getting played. Not a single time. Has to be the worst one from Next Armas. Then GVG. Well, I first thought it might be a card like Mech Warper, because it still sees play in Mech Paladin and Mech Hunter, and pretty much enabled Snip Snip OTK for Warlock, I would go with Master for Battle for number one. Nah, I'm kidding. Mech Warper is number one, definitely. The card is just so insanely good. Not just do you have five stats for two mana, but it's also defensive, so it probably sticks for a turn if you play it on turn one or turn two. And it also reduces every single card in your hand, basically, if you play a Mac deck. It has to be number one. The worst card, though, is a legendary. He kills a beast when you play him. Oh, yeah. Hammond Nessing Worry. Oh, this card is so bad. He is 100% one of the worst legendaries ever made, and for me, the worst card in this set. But moving on to Blackrock Mountain. Now, Blackrock is pretty straightforward. Let's be honest here, it's Emperor Taurusen. He enables every single combo deck ever. Just the simple effect of reducing every single card in your hand by one mana is enough to make Avian Akun, for example, if you don't run Innovate, to use your hero power into Shadowrock with the new quest to trigger its battle cry twice, to do pretty much anything. Well, the worst card, though, is one of my favorite cards of all time, and that's Major Domo. Despite him being a great meme, and you could play Amaro and him to get a 40 HP Ragnaros the Fire Lord, he's just insanely bad. If your hero would have something like 15 or 20 health, he might be better. But you pay 9 mana for a 7 health minion that replaces your hero with a hero that has 8 health. And turns out 8 health is pretty bad, because you die to literally anything. That being sad though, I did craft a Mongolden. And the grand tournament. We still don't have that many good cards. Now even though I said earlier, I would not include cards that have literally no effect, the card that is number 1 for me basically has no effect, but it still has an effect. Totem Golem, if you know what I mean. The card doesn't really do anything, but you get overloaded for one. The sheer fact that it's a 2 mana 3 4 was enough to be combined with Tunnel Truck to make Aggro Shaman a tier 1 deck. It is so simple, yet the raw stats were enough to make the deck insanely good. For the worst card, though, you could choose almost every card in this set because Grand Tournament sucks. Um, I picked Poisoned Blade. In case you never heard of the card, every time you hear a power, you give this weapon plus one attack. 
and it's a rogue card. So not just do you have already a hero power that gives you a weapon, you would only buff the card by plus one attack and it doesn't have any lifesteal. If this would be poisonous, at least it would have some effect, but it doesn't have anything, despite being named poisoned. But then it's time for the League of Explorers. In League, I first wanted to go with Tunnel Truck. Not just because we just mentioned Totem Golem, but because Ergo Shamu is really good. It's pretty much like Mana Bone before it got nerfed. But for my number one card in here, I have to go with Reno. Simply because Reno decks became a thing because of Reno. Not probably because of Zephyrus and Dragon Queen Alex as well, but Reno itself made the archetype viable. Oh yeah, uh, the worst card. Um, I go with Curse of Rafam. Just because you pay two mana to deal two damage. And your opponent can ignore the card. Like, there is literally every single card that deals damage that is better than this. I have not seen a single use for this. Whispers of the Odd Gods. Now we get introduced to a powerhouse. A 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven, vertical leap. Same like Totem Golem, it's just a 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. It's just, the stats were so insane at that point that you couldn't really deal with it. But he's not my number one pick. He has to be on this list, but he's not number one. Number one? Despite being 10 mana, despite being an odd god, is Nazoth. At any given point when you play Nazoth, you gain so much tempo back that your opponent either clears the bot or probably loses. Now he mainly sees play in slow decks. Now when you drop him against any aggro deck, you probably win. He's pretty much the Blood River Godan for Death Battle minions. And for the worst card, the random spell nobody ever wanted to get. It, it's Shatter. Shatter is so bad. Now it's not that bad anymore because there are more cards like Ray of Frost, for example, that can actually freeze a minion and then you can use Shatter on that, but it's... We literally have Snap Freeze now. It's Shatter but better. Shatter is just so insanely bad. Let's go to Karasan, my number one pick, which is Babbling Book. Now the reason I picked Babbling Book as number one is because the random spell itself can win you the world championships and give the card a nickname, as well as a copypasta. It's not just a Babbling Book that gives you Polymorph and wins you 250k, it's also quickly becoming one of my favorite cards of all time. On an honest note though, I would probably choose something like Medivh's Valet just because it's Dark Bomb on a minion that is good statted. But for the worst card, I would go with another card that gives a rogue a weapon. Rogues don't need weapons. Also, it's a fork. A deadly fork. The, the card is just bad. You pay three mana for a two drop that gives you a weapon you don't need. It's that simple. The card is just horrible. I mean, what the fork? Mean Streets of Gadgetan. We actually have three cards that I would nominate for the top cards. So let's start with number three. For me, it's Patches. So many aggro decks run Patches despite him being nerfed now. He doesn't do anything besides getting summoned for free, but it's still a zero mana one one and you draw one less card. Number two for me is Devolve, probably the best two mana spell besides the file, and it just gets rid of absolutely everything. It also recently got buffed, but now if you have something like a zero cost minion and you have a buff on them, usually what happens is if you cast Devolve, nothing happens. They're already at zero mana, they can't get reduced, cost reduced. But now what happens is they get re-rolled for the cost they're at. Anyways, uh, number one is Jade Idol, simply because Jade Druid is a thing because of that card, it enables an entire archetype, and people have to include Skarken Geist in decks just to win against Jade Druid. Literally any control warrior concedes to you if you play Jade Druid. And the card is infinite. It, it's just a mistake. And it's still here. For the worst card though, one of the richest barons you will ever see. Blubber Baron. Yes, that card exists. You've probably never seen or heard of it. Against plus one plus one for every single battle crime in your play. You not just have to hold it into your hand until it becomes at least viable, but you also have to draw it first, keep it in your hand the entire time, and play minions while you hold on to it. It's basically a dead card, but it looks cool. Now to Angoro. When I first thought about using the Kevins Below as the number one example for the best card in this set, it got nerfed three times. It was just so good that it deserves to be one of the best cards of the set. But it's not my number one. My number one has to be Firefly. I think, might be incorrect here, it was the first one mana one two slash one drop that generates another one drop. So any token deck, any aggressive deck, any combo deck, run Firefly. And most of them still do. What are the two worst cards though? I first wanted to use Bite Weed. I'm pretty sure I said the sentence to every bad card, but the card is so bad. So instead of just playing Edwin, you would play a worse version that gets less stats for every card you played before. And it's an epic, which makes it even worse. But the worst card in here has to be our boy. It's Galvadon, the last Kaladosaur. Not Galvadon himself, but the quest. Playing a buff Paladin deck in which you include the quest to buff minions six times just to get a minion that instantly gets removed makes not just your win rate go down, but also your mood. Building your deck around this one card and getting rid of good cards just to summon your boy Galvadon, just not worth it. He's number one in my heart from this set, but he's really bad. But then the expansion with the most broken cards ever came around. Knights of the Frozen Throne. You could pretty much use every Death Knight. With that being said, I go with Gul'dan. Gul'dan has not been nerfed and it's exactly as I mentioned earlier for Nazoth. The moment you play him against any aggressive deck, you win. You re your Void Lord, you re your Void Collar, and you usually get Magennis as well. Giant Bot. Any aggressive player loses, and every turn you heal and deal 3 damage. So it's Spreading Plague, which would be number 2. Gudan has to be number 1, but I think Spreading Plague deserves the same price. It used to be 5 mana, now it's 6. It still wins your games against aggressive decks. If your opponent only has 4 minions, you get 420 in stats in Taunt. 
so Fortnite has to go through it. So outside of legendaries and death knights, it will be spreading plaque, but because Gul'dan exists, it's Gul'dan. For the worst cards, first I thought about a Wicked Skeleton, because it's a 4 mana 1 1 that does nothing, but there is a really stupid OTK with them, so he is number 3 for the worst. Number 2 is Icebreaker, simply because Morabi and Freeze Shaman just never became a thing. You pay 3 mana to take damage and don't kill a minion because you don't freeze anything. But number one has to be Rock Reef. Not just because you never saw the card, but even if you would play it, you summon two one twos that are poisonous that every single player can just ignore or just kill for free, basically. Yeah, I, I don't know. This should be something like three mana or so. Cobalts and Catacombs. This time we got three cards for the top cards in this set. Well, I'm personally insanely biased and would go with Void Lord because, you know, it's a four mana card because of Void Caller and it wins against almost every aggressive deck. It can't be number one. It just can't be. Because number two for me would be Kingspain. Before it got nerfed, it was one of the most played decks in there. Because you had something like a 15 attack weapon that hits you every single turn and that is infinite, so you never fatigue. It's like Jade Idol and tons of damage combined, which brings me to number one. It's Psychic Scream. It's just a removal spell and it's just for Priest, not even neutral. But for seven mana, you don't silence and leave the minions on the field, you don't destroy the minions and trigger the death battle, you shuffle all the garbage on the field, like everything, into the opponent's deck so they top deck nothing. For me, one of the most hated cards and also the best card of this set. For the two worst cards though, first we got Ixlit, <laughs> because the card is just complete garbage. <laughs> it's just such a bad legendary. If you would like to summon a copy of a card, just play Faces Manipulator. But number one is the Unicorn. The Unicorn is so bad because despite the opponent not being able to target it, Fairy Dragon is pretty much the same card for two mana less. And this card is an epic and you don't really want to buff it. At least it's a Unicorn. Next, in Witchwood, we get one of the most broken cards of all time. It's Shadowwalk. You could say something like Gen and Barker because they also enable Dax, but they became part of the Hall of Fame later on. I would give them number two and number three, but for number one it has to be Shadowwalk. Shadowwalk is just so insanely good even if you don't go infinite. It's the win condition of lots of Shaman decks. Definitely number one. For the two worst cards though, first Deadly Arsenal, because it's six mana to do, I don't know what it does, because I've never seen it, it deals a little bit of damage. So we'll need to include a giant weapon in the deck, which might be Gorehal, for example, and then draw the spell before the weapon. But for the number one card, I don't know who thought this would be a good idea, it's Duskfallen Aviana. There's exactly one occasion in which the card is good, and that is if you play against your second account to finish a quest. To play giant minions faster. That's the only thing I can think about. Giving your opponent the initiative to play a giant card for free first, and then you can just kill the minion, it's just bad. It's probably the worst legendary ever made. The Boomstay. So Boomstay has tons of great cards, but the top three for me would be first Christology, because it's a one mana draw two, and because Paladin sucks at drawing cards, this is just really good, combined with Divine Favor, that makes a world of a difference for Mac Handbuff Paladin. Number two would be Makathun because it enables OTK decks. It turns out Makathun Warlock is still really good. And the number one card that was definitely an easy choice considering that it's probably the most played legendary, it's Ziliax. It's not broken. It's like on the right level to fit into pretty much every deck. It used to be the most played card for multiple months before, you know, Galakon Shaman became broken and then all the cards in there became number one. And it's just Unity, Precision, Perfection. For the worst card though, but I have to go with Holomancer. Only sees play in exactly one stupid combo, in which you need three Emperor ticks. So it's a combo that doesn't really happen ever. But he would give your opponent double bomb scop and major domo, and then kill all three. So the opponent transforms into major domo and then blows himself up. But based on me saying that combo, you can already guess how bad the card is. That's the only deck I'd ever saw play in. Rastakan's Rumble. So when going through all the cards on Rastakans, it was pretty easy to select the bad cards because you probably would choose like 50 to 60. But the top three worst cards for me would be Gurubashi Offering because it just kills itself or dies. It doesn't do anything. Number two would be Spirit of the Tiger because the Tiger is summoned doesn't do anything. But number one, and I think you can all guys say it's Hyreek. Unless you get the Hyreek from Bandersmoosh or played with Evolve in Shaman, which doesn't happen, it's a fill your bot with one once. It's Shuma in worse. It's Onyxia in way worse. It's Call of the Locusts in worse. It's just horrible for Legendary. For the best cards though, I would go with Zol'jin just because it's another hero and hero cards are really powerful. You know, you replay all the spells. It's another win condition for Hunter. But I think number one, just for the effect alone, has to be timeout. I know it doesn't really see play because Control Paladin doesn't really see play, but it's Ice Block for two turns. Not just when you go down to one health, but you can use it on your own turn, attack into something and don't take damage, then your opponent has to deal with it, and it doesn't get countered. Besides Counter Spell and something like Loath Up that increases the cost of it, there's no counter to it. And there doesn't have counters for secrets. You can even play Zephyrus into Secret Removal, into Flare for example. But Timeout is a better version of Ice Block. Rise of Shadows. For the worst cards, real quick. Underbelly use. I don't know who thought about this card, but 
it exists. There's not much to say. The card is just horrible for seven mana. But number one is obviously Dr. Boom Scheme. It just, where's the point? Even if you have this card on turn one and you hold it in your hand for 20 turns, so until fatigue basically, you basically have the effect of Reno. So just play Reno or play any other card that you can actually use. Or the best cards, a mana cyclone, zero mana draw eight random spells, just insanely good for card generation. And about where you play quest mage and you play your next element that costs zero mana this turn, you can draw like six random spells on turn three. Number one though, is the card we all got for free when we locked in. It's Behold, into Behold, into I hate this card so much. I don't why, I, don't, I just don't know why it's a card, but it exists. It's too good. The main reason why it's number one for me is Big Priest. You resummon your dead minions. Well, if Vargath is one of the cards that gets resummoned, he resummons himself, then himself again, and then himself again. I think the card should be something like six mana. Not gonna lie, I think the effect is way too powerful. I hate the card, but it's number one for me. Now in Odoom, we get a ton of good and bad cards. It was hard to make a top three, but for the best cards, I have to include both Arcane Flight Mage as well as Cloud Prince for number three and number two. Not just because Secret Mage is insanely good, but if you just read the effect and what the cards do for the stats and the mana cost they have, you're just not sure who made these cards and thought it's okay. Now the comparison I usually make for broken cards, what do they do for the effect they already have? For example, Godfrey is a full bot clear and a 4-4. Now Cloud Prince is use Fireball, not just on a minion, on anything, usually my face, and summon a 4-4. For the best card though, I have to go with the quest, Shaman Quest. Turns out having your better quite twice, which is really simple to achieve, is good enough to make Shaman at least a tier 2 deck for pretty much the next year. And there's so many things you can do with that. It's my personal number one card on the expansion. For the worst cards though, we start with Sunstruck Henchman because it's a 50-50 that the card does nothing. Number two would be Wasteland Scorpid because it's literally Maxna plus one one and plus one mana. It does nothing, it just has Poisonous. But the number one worst card in this set is on the spot it is because of the effect being so insanely specific that it doesn't see any play. Will Kick Master. Now you might just say it's a 2 mana 1-2, so you can combo it with other cards and get more combo cards from it. Thing is though, you play a 2 mana 1-2 that has no effect the moment you play it, that is also an epic, so it sucks even more if you get the card, and that can only see play in combo rogue decks, in which you'd play how many combo cards? Two? Three? Maybe? Well, the last set, Descent of Dragons, Descent of Power Creep. There are so many cards in here that are just so much better than all the recent sets. So for the worst cards, it's, it's kind of hard because almost all the cards are playable. Like even the worst cards are somewhat usable. The second worst card in here for me will be Firehawk, just because it doesn't do anything. Gets plus stats and that's the effect. So it doesn't synergize with anything. And number one would be Secure the Deck, just because if you play Gong Druid, which would be the only case I think where you would play this, you don't play this card. So even in the one specific deck, it could see play and it doesn't see play in. And it's an epic, and it sucks. Would be the reason for the worst card in there. For the rest cards though, we have three cards that all get nerfed. For spot number three, it's going to be Dragon's Pack, just because it's five mana, 10, 12 in stats. It's basically your Ace of Surger after you finish your Druid quest. And it has Taunt. Number two would be Apothecary. You can do so many stupid things with that. You can play Anubisath and buff your hand play plus 18 plus 18. You can play Deathwing Dragonlord and summon 60 mana worth of dragons for free. Or just draw into any Deathwater card. That being said though, both cards are getting nerfed, with Dragon's Pack only buffing the wolves it summons by plus 2 plus 2, and Apothecary by being 5 mana instead of 4. But our number 1 card doesn't get nerfed mana wise, just effect wise which is Dragon Queen Alex. Now I do love Reno Dax. In almost any case when I played her in Wild, my opponent could either clear the bot or he lost the game. When I get the one in, I don't know, 30 or something, and I get Emerus from her, I just win the game. Because Dragon Queen Alex is that good. But now it's going to get nerfed. The nerf is, the random dragon you get can't be Dragon Queen Alex itself, so you can't go infinite theoretically anymore. That being said though, there's one number one overall from all the sets, and that is the big chonker. The absolute unit. He's just a solid 5-5. Five, five. five mana that draws you a card. In my heart, he's number one. My overall top three for the best cards would be Reno, Nazoth, and Gul'dan, because you can probably tell that I love Reno Warlock. And the three worst cards have to be Nat Pagel, Duskfallen Aviana, and Dr. Boom's Scheme, just because all three cards suck so hard. And that was it for my personal best as well as worst cards from each expansion. Let me hear your thoughts, because 100% you have a different opinion. Now just to remind you again, I did not include cards that have literally no effect. There were other cards that are considered for the worst cards, but if you have 20 cards that all suck, you gotta pick one of them. If you would like to spend the time in typing out your own list of best and worst cards, feel free to do so in the comments down below. That being said, my name is Solemn. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Solemn as we stream there multiple times a week. Or you could join our Discord, link for that in the description down below. Thank you very much for your time. Fun fact, I'm at 52 minutes and 21 seconds right now at the recording, so you can see how much time I cut when I edited this video. I don't know how long it's going to be. I assume something like 20 to 25 minutes. Thank you again for watching. And take care.